Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the VT Prusik. What is the VT Prusik? Okay, this is a VT Prusik. As you can see it has two eyes, they are sewn together. Um, they each have a sewn connection point and they are usually in the lengths of 28 inches 30 inches or 32 inches. Um, they have a core that is made typically from nylon, polyester, or a blend of the two fibers. And covering, protecting it, is the sheath. This outside part here is the sheath. And that is typically created from aramid fibers such as Kevlar or Technora. Technora in particular is a great um, material for this because it has no melting point. It will burn before it melts. Um, and the temperature is created during, you know, an ascent isn't going to be enough to cause it to burn. Um, now, when loaded from eye to eye, that is from this point to this point, this Tofelberger right here, this Epicord, which is 9.3 millimeters in diameter and 32 inches in length, has a strength or an MBS, minimal breaking strength, of around 3,000 pounds or 13 kilonewtons. When it is in basket configuration, the MBS or minimum braking strength becomes 6,000 pounds or 26 kilonewtons. So this is basket configuration. Oops. Where you have it connected like this and it's being suspended from this point or if it's being suspended from a hitch. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so what is the benefit of these VT Prusix versus a sewn loop? Well, you'll see here that with a sewn loop like this, the only thing you can create, or the only type of hitch you can create, is a symmetric one. So go around and here I've created a regular old Prusik. Oops. There we go. Sorry. Um, so, what makes this symmetric? Well, the fact that it has three wraps on the bottom and three wraps on the top. Any hitch you can make with this is going to have symmetry. And with a VT Prusik, you can create hitches that are asymmetrical. So. I'm going to show you how to tie here I have something called a Schwabisch and a Schwabisch is an asymmetrical meaning it is not symmetrical hitch that you can create using a hitch cord also known as a VT Prusik. So you can see how here I've created a symmetric hitch and then an asymmetric hitch. The difference being obviously that the hitch or the wrap orientation, there are three here, three here, and there are four here and one here. So that is pretty cool. It opens the doors for 
creating all kinds of different friction hitches. Um, now, another good thing is you can use something like an asymmetric prusik like this um, Schwabisch for a sense uh, when you're trying to go up a rope. And the reason this is better than a regular prusik is because a regular prusik, which I've just removed, will bind. And this is less likely to because it has the wraps oriented the way it does. Um, if I were to create a asymmetrical prusik that has four apps on the bottom and one on the top, then that would, well, that would jam if you're using it for a sense. Um, that would not be a useful hitch. Um, so, typically, like I said, it's best to use asymmetric hitches like this for ascending, but what about descending? Here, I have the VT Prusik, and here I am tying the VT, which is also known as a Valdetain truss. Starts with four wraps at the top, which can be adjusted to three or two as needed, and then go around like this. And here we go. Now, although this is recommended for descents, this can absolutely be used for ascending also. Um, you can go up a rope and you can go down. Now, the reason this hitch is preferable for ascending is because when you go up, there's no sit back. And if you're wondering what sit back is, if you watch this hitch go up and then down, notice how you see this extension here that the hitch is making? That is sit back and it can minimize progress. So if you're going up, then, you know, for every six inches you go up, you might lose three, for example, um, because of this. Now, um, while the VT Prusik is great for making hitches, it can also be used as um, a lanyard. So, for example, um, you can take your VT Prusik and you can attach it to your harness like this and you can have the other end connected to anything you need. You could go around a tree branch like this if you needed. Um, it's useful that way. And you could also use it as a lanyard at half length. So you can go around press it like this and then use it like that. So that is the half length lanyard setup. Now you can also use it to um, you can use it as a quick draw. So if you ran out of quick draws, you can use it half length, or you can pull out the eye on one side and you can make a full length quick draw, okay?
Now, I've noticed that a lot of people tend to think that these eye to eye prussics can only be used, or VT prussics as you want to call them, um, can only be used on ropes that are approximately three millimeters um, larger than the VT itself. So, for example, this is a nine millimeter um, hitch cord or eye to eye prusik or VT prusik, and a lot of people think that you can only use it on a rope that's three millimeters greater in diameter. So here, this is a rope that is 11, I oh no, 12, it's 11.8, but we'll say for it, for the sake of discussion, it's 12 millimeters. So this would be, you know, what would seem like a perfect match for this hitch. Um, but you have to remember that the VT Prusik, as you can see, it flattens out. It, unlike regular ropes, it's not designed to hold its diameter. It's supposed to flatten out along the rope to create more surface contact. And because of that, I can use this on any rope equal to or greater for its, compared to its diameter. So this nine millimeter hitch can be used um, on a rope that is nine millimeters or greater in diameter. So that's something to keep in mind when using these. It's a myth that you only have, that you can only use them on, um, you know, but the thing is, you know, if you're using it for a rope that is of equivalent or, you know, of, you know, it follows the rule. So like this nine millimeter hitch cord is now going around a um, 12 millimeter rope. So that is all copacetic according to the laws of, you know, imaginary hitch cord rules. And so with, um, with this, if it were, let's say it were attached to, let's pretend that this is a nine millimeter rope. Now, if it were nine millimeter, you might want to, you know, with your Schwabish, which has four wraps on the top and one on the bottom, you might want to increase that by one wrap, for example. That way you can make sure that you don't, that you have enough friction to work on this rope. And that could be really helpful, basically. So, you know, if you have a rope that is, you know, fits the rule of three millimeter difference, then great, you're all set. Tie whatever hitches you want. But if it's closer to one that is, you know, equal to its own diameter, then you might want to add wraps, um, depending on what hitch you create. So um, if you have like a VT, you might want to do uh, five wraps at the top instead of four, and then maybe do less braids. So, all right, this has been a, you know, educational series on VTs. This is episode one. There's more to come. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.